to welcome everybody. I'm Olga Sher, your host for tonight, and we are Turtle Island United. Thank you so much for joining us. We are a project by two organizations, Antinanko and Plaza Tree of Life. Uh, we've been providing direct relief to many different people this few months, you know, to help uh, battle COVID, but also providing this educational series, uh, sharing all kinds of skill set. Uh, our link is in the chat. If you would like to check out the recordings from the prior webinars, you're welcome to do so. And we also have uh, a bunch of uh, additional ones coming up on all kinds of wonderful topics. And tonight we have here Delvin Fiddler and Maria Raganisi, and they have a great topic for us. We have just two more days left in this year. So tonight we will be uh, talking about uh, traditional winter count and Delvin and Maria um, will tell us more about it and we will also have an interactive part. So welcome Delvin and Maria, I will let you. Um, yeah, so um, you, this is a very important time at this time of uh, uh, winter time, we share stories and evening time with our peoples and the young ones, Tagojas. And uh, this is a time the, we will, will um, listen to these stories and stuff, but also write down the thing, the historical also memories are special events throughout the year to review what took place at the different things to remember at a particular time and place, but also get ready for the next year. So winter counts are very uh, vital. Uh, like people take pictures per se in today's times, I think, and I can kind of, I guess that'd be like a picture, uh, you know, um, winter count like, you know, and to to share that with all the, the, the tell your, share your story and how you, uh, the life is, is around from, from the time that you was born, but also the time of special events of that year. And usually there's a, a person uh, that will record these things or a person that was delegated uh, or uh, was a um, person that would uh, share their stories. Today we have like powwows to, that's the closest thing and then some ceremonies, but this is also a tradition to share, but also encourage uh, and, and continue sharing this way to help and share the stories of your personal uh, uh, stories, you know, and then so the next generation would know how to interpret that. So then you also become a, uh, you know, uh, artist and how to, to, to describe or describe what that meaning behind that. Uh, so there's many different winter accounts of like all the battles or what took place making friendships, uh, making treaties or making a passageway or uh, 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 a common friendship uh, of what these individuals are doing and also as a nation, but also for yourself and your community. So, and then, uh, you know, these, these individuals will have a, um, the responsibility, what we call storytellers per se, uh, try to remember within your, your family, but also your community, but also the whole nation. So, as you see these different pictures, um, you know, symbols, uh, the winter count also describes those different things that took place of the story behind uh, the, the, those things to your, your, your walk of life. Um, and that goes on to the next generation. So once it kind of used up the hide, you go on to the next hide, then, you know, okay, you hold that up together, then you use that hide. And then, and then each time that the new uh, uh, baby is born, you ask them to come forth to, to start there as well. Uh, and and um, to start their, their, their story. So when they become older uh, men or women, when at that time comes, they can look at beyond that to just start asking questions or when they get older, they can start asking questions about these things, but also partake in that um, uh, winter count um, medicines and, and the knowledges that we shared with, the, with our family and our, and our people, our nations. So, and in all that's the winter count, they have different, also different ways they could go across or 
you can go in a circle, but usually in the circle, it symbolizes the time you went around the sun, but also the, the circular how you into the walk of life. Mm -hmm. But also the star is equal, it's, you know, uh, how we go from um, left to right, but some nations go from right to left because they call that dilexia, but really it's not dilexia because there's, you know, traditionally we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, um, we're we don't have English uh, interpretations. We have uh, symbols and those things mean certain things. So you put those two things together or, you know, you put it and that symbolizes something as telling a, a, what took place at that time you're talking like this or or you're sharing a story like this, or, or you have a two men stand together or something, mm -hmm. or um, those kind of things will have a very uh, significance on the story that you're telling for the for the for the yate for the people. So when the next generation comes, is the the future, do we have an idea what took place to account on um, on that those times? So. You know, today we have many people knowing and not knowing it, that they keep these records this way and they do it on beadwork or like this, for example, you got the designs like this, just you know, like you could also can tell on your beadwork or your, your style of dress. Traditionally, you put your designs, but that means something, you know. Um, so, you know, all that kind of inquires in that kind of way of to tell them the, the winter count. So tonight, uh, we're also going to do a winter count with, I'm going to do a winter count with you as well. And uh, of this year, because so many things happened this year that's just um, amazing. And um, so I'll share that with you as we all converse. And then um, I'll do fast as I can, I guess, with when we got an hour, mm -hmm. we got 45 minutes or something. So I'll draw, I'll, I'll try to do my stick figure as fast as I can. <laughs> <Not to get laughs> uh, Dylan and I were just uh, recently talking about, you know, um, what, what a year this has been. And um, there is so much, I think, to record. Um, you know, of course, COVID-19 has been made a huge impact on all of us in, in very different ways, though. So it's a, an event that would be recorded probably in all our winter counts if we were doing one for 2020. And yet I bet that every one of our winter counts would be totally different on how the events that took place this year affected our personal lives. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Delwyn and I thought, well, how could we bring the winter count, the idea of that going from winter to winter in a year, how would we bring that into a almost, what would that look like in a modern way? Uh, how would we depict those events that happened in our life? Um, so if we had to look back on them and share them maybe with the future generations, what, and who did not experience this year that we've experienced? What you know? What would that look like for each one of us? And we just got into this whole incredible dialogue trying to figure it out. And uh, one thing that came to mind for both of us when we were discussing this was uh, recently where we were in South Dakota. We were delivering um, some supplies and PPE and medicinals for um, a few reservations out in South Dakota and. While we were there, we visited our partners um, at Native Hope, and we spent some time with them, uh, you know, just sharing and, and catching up. And, and while we were there, we met a, a really incredible young man um, who was an artist, and he was sharing his artwork with us, and we were just so moved at um, the way he, you know, the way he drew and the way he... Um, depicted things in his life. Uh, his artwork just really spoke to us. So um, when we thought about doing this webinar, Delwyn and I were like, you know, I would love it if we could invite Dennis to join us. And um, Dennis is um, Native American and um, he is a, an artist from Chamberlain, South Dakota. And he's uh, currently, he's attending the uh, Institute of uh, American Indi Indian Arts in Santa Fe. And um, He's studying film, um, but his artwork was so moving. We thought, what if we asked Dennis um, to draw a winter count? And, and what would that look like if we brought in some modern pictures? We, we kept the flavor of the winter count, but drew it um, in, a, in a more modern version. 
And um, Dennis was really happy to um, join us. He was excited to come in to the webinar to help us to put this together. And um, so he put together a, um, a winter count that we want to share with you. And um, I'm not sure if Dennis is here yet. Is he Maria, here yet? Dennis is on his way because Trisha just reminded us he um, he's just finishing work right now. But this is his uh, winter count. We can take a look at it. And mm -hmm. uh, once he joins, maybe he can uh, tell us more. Yes. And um, I think, I, I mean, when I saw it, I thought he did an incredible job. Um, and I'm interested, like I, I kind of um, deciphered it, what I thought that it meant, you know, through my lens, but I'm very interested in, in hearing, um, you know, what it, what it meant to him um, and what these pictures symbolize to him. But um, this was the kind of thing we, we thought that we would take a few minutes um, you know, and during some part of this webinar to have you all kind of um, think about um, how you would want to depict the events in your life of this year, um, since so many things happened um, of great impact and importance, I think, to all of us. And so I'm curious if you, you know, if you all have a, a piece of paper in front of you and maybe want to, in just looking at what Dennis has done, maybe just want to start, um, with a beginning point, like if you had to depict uh, the beginning of the year, how what it was like for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. This and year. so, what is it? That's Paza. That's when we start with Paza. For this year, we 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 planned it, and uh, it came talking about the, all these wonderful things. So that's the start for me. Well, it was um, you know just to build on that for a second. Um, COVID-19 actually was the thing that kind of launched our nonprofit into being um, because we were just getting started and then, you know, everything opened up. There was such a big need in Indian country for help. And so we kind of launched our nonprofit into being. And so that was a huge thing for us this year that came out of um, COVID-19 happening. And so even though it had many, uh, you know, some implications weren't good and there was a lot of, you know, uh, just a lot of change brought about by this um, pandemic. Um, there were also good things that came and good things that were born in light to help. And so for us, Paza was a big, a big starting point. So if you want to just take a moment to reflect and think about um, the beginning of your year, maybe, and how, how COVID and the, and the things that started the year um, just impacted your life. And maybe start in a, um, Delwyn explained that the spiral is more like a year to year, Delwyn. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very explained the, uh, <clears throat> everything goes in the, that's around and, you know, the circular. Mm -hmm. So, so it's turning out we always goes in that, you know, like we had the ceremony, we have going in a circle. So it, it symbolizes that flow, flow of life and continue into that, into that life and uh, put it into the, the, to the usually this is a paper but usually you kind of put it in hide or you know uh, when you're a young kid but they're showing us how to put it in a rabbit hide mm. you had to go get the hide and uh you know the rabbit hide and kind of put our little um start our personal um rent account and what did you know? they use to uh, i mean we're using pencils obviously but when they back in the ancestors days when they what did they use to draw like, Usually you get the paints from the flowers uh, and put to the, you know, there's certain, there's certain woods out there you can also just dip into it, just like a regular pencil, you can take that either with your, mm -hmm. your fingers, but also with the, with that certain, uh, uh, you know, wood, you know, they could use that point, mm -hmm. you could just take that point, that ink will come off that just that briefly and you can kind of draw mm -hmm. into that uh, kind of almost like a regular mm -hmm. pen. You know, some are, some of our relatives use, you know, certain, you know, like to put on the edge of stone. You got these pictographs in different places that like you click clip jumping places and like the, pictographs. Uh, pictographs. Yeah. You got like um, things already taken in these different caves, you know, that have symbolized your hand and all, and all these different stories on there. So um, they will take that in carving, you know, and our sisters from the West, they really, into, you know, that's what, that's their tradition. That's their interpretations. Uh, and then also brothers on the East Coast, same thing and that kind of way to, to bring the, the, Kind of build these things that they build today, uh, uh, medicines and 
necklaces and stuff like that. Um, and then bringing uh, interpreting the ink on there, where they, some nations have tattoos that symbolizes uh, their 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 the uh, um, their traditionals too as well. So that means something when they start putting a pin, but also with the paints with the flowers have different colors and there's different. You have to put them together to to make that you know to the, make that ink and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you go to a pipe stone, you go to different areas that have those different type of colors. We grab the flowers and what colors you want, you want to put that together. And then it takes your meta, your personal bag, like those mm -hmm. things are separate, but you can interpret, you know, grab that and make that mix. So mm -hmm. when you put water in that mini, mm -hmm. then that will kind of make that liquid. And then you put that into the, to the hide. Mm -hmm. But, you know, <clears throat> So they were trying to interpret those things, and you, if you go to the museums, some of those, uh, some of the museums like the Smithsonian, are just just various places throughout the world, but also here in um, Turtle Island, it shares those things. So if you get a chance to go to Chicago, or Washington D.C., or Florida, or you know different nations will share their, you know how you go into the airport, or you start the the the, the like you're down south. Uh, southwest area, I, um, you start seeing Copapilli down there, you know, mm -hmm. you start selling the, the, the trails. So you kind of just being in the state of Arizona. Is so it's, it's really unique. Every, every area is very precious and it's, it's sacred. The place they call, you know, New Mexico, Texas, you know, all these different areas they call now, but we have names for those places and we, we that's our that's original home sites our original places that we do ceremonies and stuff and and it's still there all these things are still there like uh when we went to south dakota a couple of weeks ago i shared with with uh my brother and sisters um some places are sacred to us and uh, we can share one calm but also our brothers cheyenne brothers and sisters in arapaho nations the black hills paha sapa you know, Bear Butte, you know, um, Devil's Tower, they call it, but also the Minitiga, the, the Tipi, you know. And if you look at the land area, it's telling a story. You, you can see it. And then it's that 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 structure they call Devil's Tower. It's so grand. And, and, and it's telling stories. This is, as soon as you get like certain miles away, half a mile, two miles away, you can see it. So you with your own eyes. But that also in terms of you, if you go around it a whole mile around, it tells the whole story. We didn't go all the way around because we did a we did a, a prayer, you know, and some some people asked us questions about why am I doing there, and um, I told them I was we're doing a prayer ceremony and and to bless the uh, the Chinupa, and that's what um, we did, and they're really happy to participate in that day they want to learn more so i told them to go to our website and stuff and to start asking questions because they're so intrigued on what how that looked like in the town of stories of devil's tower in that area so and then you would if you travel back towards the left going back towards um what's that place called um, deadwood mm -hmm. going back to rap city that you know going towards bear butte again you got the buffalo jump of wyoming and then you, if you go south Going towards Custer, I think we got to change our name, but um, <laughs> south of Black Hills, Paha Sapa, um, that story tells us things, you know, there's, I know those houses, but that uh, uh, if you pay close attention, for that whole two days, we was looking for three days, we was there in that area, we was looking for buffalo, and all we found was beefalo, and I was like, well, where's the beefalo at, people, you know, where's, where's the Tatanka, you know, and then when we finally made a whole circle uh, and we made it back back to Bear Butte. When we got there, we got to see a Tatanka, the mm -hmm. buffalo. Then again, that tells another story. So it's all around us. You know, Unchu Maka is, as we're sitting here now, you look outside and the stars and the moon and the sun and the sky, and the birds, the water nations, you know, the, the fly nations, you know, the bird nations. So you have these different interpretations of um, the, the vibrations of the things to tell the story. So that's always continually reaching out to us all the time. For where we located at, where we're at here right now in Pennsylvania, there's a big old flock of, uh, it's open field over to one side. It's like a farming thing, like it's a 
big space, you know, but the the birds, um, what are they, seagulls or something? Oh, Seagull no, geese. Or, geese. Uh, geese. And uh, we have a hunting dog. Uh, my mm -hmm. friends here have a hunting dog called Jake. Jake from State Farm. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's out, he wants to go out there, you know. And, um, you know, and to, you're observing the, how the, the, the geese fly up in the air and go, you know, and they go around in these different places. So that's also telling that the winter count, how they travel too. Mm -hmm. During the winter time, they mm -hmm. go this way or time for them to go that way. So that having that now, you know, that general knowledge or just kind of being aware of those things and practicing in that, their continuing winter count, you know, day to day, they're telling the story all the way around them. So you just gotta, you know, listen and see and um, interpret that, you know. Uh, usually we just kind of wake up and do our yoga, do one, two, drink coffee, that's it, go out the door, go home and, you know, go to work, come back home, that's it. I don't see nothing else but that, but, but, um, Usually that's that's how we get our story, you know, interpret those different things that events that took place, because they're always communicating with us, even though we're in our uh, in our uh, what do you call them again? Um, those vehicles, yes, these cars and trucks that we drive to get mm -hmm. around. Um, I don't. Is it even possible? Do, are you, I don't know. If some places are not even allowed to uh, to to ride a horse. Is it allowed? We can ride a horse there. Yeah. I don't know if we can allow ride a horse there, but um, I'll probably just get a little pony so I can just ride around like that, you know. But um, that way I don't can't get bucked off or anything because if it bucks, I can just hang on by my feet, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, it's just an inside joke. Yeah. So you know, having a winter count, it's it's. We have singers at powwows or ceremonies, different places, and then, and that's knowing or not knowing. The, the that would say tacos is be careful what you do or say because the little ones are always looking at you, always watching you. You know how you behave. So in that kind of sense too, try to be more positive and 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 and, and with love and 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 share these things that we know uh, of these stories for you with each other when we different gatherings. You know, we sit down and put a fire on and and, mm -hmm. and share food, you know, and and uh, communicate this way, you know. Uh, but today, uh, this thing called Zoom and what they call it, uh, they got mm -hmm. Duo, I mean, all these different platforms. Google. Uh, Google, mm -hmm. and, uh, meet, go meet something, <laughs> you know. And so, you know, today, this is how we communicate because of this, 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 uh, uh, COVID uh, mm -hmm. ordeal, but at the same time, it's just like it, it's it's uh, in one sense, it's also sharing those things. But at the same time, it's it's kind of helping the earth in a way to kind of like give it a rest. But at the same time, opening us to reflect on us as human beings to to look how we walk on the land, mm -hmm. you know, how we walk and how we how we see it and how we listen to it, you know. Mm -hmm. Because you know the hawks, the geese, the little even that little red bird and cardinals and and red bird, you know all these different type of things are communicating with us. You know, uh, in our house we have a little where we we have a little uh, what is that? Uh, oh, we have the Pennsylvania field. I call him the Pennsylvania from that movie Groundhog, because near our house he lives near us. You know, so he comes out now and then. He comes out and <laughs> he comes says hello. You know, it kind of freaks me out because I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna catch him. You know, but um, I don't think that's that's. <laughs> I'll find a way, but um, Delwin, yeah, someone, out, so. someone uh, in our group uh, just asked, would it be possible to put up a picture of the height and maybe you could explain a few of the pictograms on the count? Can you depict? Yeah, that? I can, I can share some, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, there's no time. It's always perpetual, but it's like always having a, a existence of our, our humanness here. Um, so I can see here, it's like that interpretation that could be somebody, in my opinion, I'm just saying like, because I don't know what, you know, it takes there, but, but this is how you start in the middle. Usually like you start with a baby or, you know, how you start remembering the days. So it looks like a different camp, the trails to me, this, the, 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 uh, the beginning part. And then it goes on to like, a it looks like a, like somebody either do a ceremony or or like uh, somebody got the like um, look like it kind of got sick, or somebody got one in the community got sick. On the way, they had a horse, found a horse that come looking for a horse. So the horse would symbolize travel, but also it could also symbolize that there. 
so again, he shows that same trail again, that same design on this one, uh, the next one over, <clears throat> the two next over. And then it looks like he's this this next one over. He's trying to look like something came in. Uh, I don't know for what side this side or yeah, I would say something like what like like he was trying to grab something. Is somebody trying to uh, grab him or something? Okay, yeah. So it looks like. On this bottom right where the red, where he painted red. This one? Look, uh, this one here, the one that this, and I'm still inside the circle up here, the small one up here. But it looks like they're trying to reach out, like, you know, looking out for the baby or something, or reaching out for that person crying. And then, like, the war, the battle happened here or something, like somebody got hurt. And this one with the thing here is like, like the sitting bull to symbolize his name. He would have a bull sitting. And that was, you know, they put a line to him to symbolize you know, where to count that sitting bull, for example. So next one is look like he kind of run around the camp. And then the next one is like he, let's see, I'm going to the next one now. So this looks like he drew again, he same thing again. So this next one looks like you had a ceremony with uh with the fallen one. And then the next one, look like he put you trying to tell a winter kind of story, and then it goes into a flower. So that could that could be a uh, like remembrance, or it could also symbolize life. And then looks like he's traveling again. And then he kind of look he's looking around, just like and the next one has like a little body again. Delwin? Yes. Delwin? Yeah. Just a question as to um, maybe we can put you right have Olga right on the one uh, that you're talking. I I'm looking. So where are you? You're not where the teepee's been hit by a fire, are you? Or the or oh, the house, house, you mean? Yeah. So where are you? Can you go backwards? Oh, right there. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's some right there. Yeah. How far do you want me to okay. go back? Okay, that that no, that's perfect. That way Olga can follow you as we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that one sorry, yeah, just so, wanted to catch us up. So it looks like they put usually this symbolizes what my my understanding is that this is usually the fence line and all the the um at that time people will put the fence up. Um, but we don't have fences. But that's how as soon as the homes are, you know, the log cabin or the log home, it can symbolize as, as you know what that looks like. But also uh you know, you see smoke coming out, but at the same time, it can also symbolize, like you say, in a burning cabin. That's the best thing you could do to, uh, because there, I, I, in that sense, uh, you know, they didn't have permission or didn't ask for permission from these different nations to, to settle there. You know, you had to speak all these different type of uh, languages, or comprehend these words of what they mean. And uh, a long time ago, they used to call nations, and I would say, well, don't go across that. Don't cross that Mississippi or Missouri or you know the Great Water as they call it. <laughs> like that. What was who's somebody asked a question? Who was that? Is that, okay. is that Thomas? Yeah. Thomas, you had some very good comments about the concept of time and perpetual existence. If you'd like, it's to not a con it's not a concept. It's it's a truth. One 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 month. <clears throat> that that's the whole that's the whole point of time. Is time is is the conduit or the concept of truth. A lot of science says that we became humans when we invented the heating of our food. Mm. Well, um, time has always existed. The sun hurt, heats the earth and the earth regrows the water and the trees and stuff. So time existed before we observed it. But time in existence in itself was us waiting on the food to warm up from a cold piece of meat to a hot piece of meat, however it may happen, whether we put it on the fire or the animal caught fire for whatever reason, and we are waiting for it to get done burning so we can go, you know, we know fire is hot. So we have to wait for that fire to calm down and collect that meat and try it. So the construct of time is that wait for cold food to get hot or hot food to control, um, to cool down. So the construct of time is that of patience. Uh -huh. So we are, it's just like when I, with uh, my motto for our law firm, it all begins and ends in your mind, which will allow control you will. So if you let time control you or that anticipation 
of the food to get hot or the food to get cold, then you are allowing that, that particular time and instance or perspective to control your further actions. Mm. You're waiting on that food to get hot when you can go do something else. So there is no constructive time. You're not waiting on that food to get hot or cool down. So time doesn't exist because you can easily do something else. You're not allowing that one perspective to control your outcome. And then Trisha had a question if the winter count is something that most tribes practice. Yeah, they, they still to this day, like I was saying, a lot of people. That, you know, have a, it's, we have to be careful in mindset of the words that we use. Mm. They're not practices, the participations. Once again, time does not exist. So you would not be practicing time. You would only be participating in time. So these, they, like this design here, you see in my shirt. They, they will. So the story put, is story you're trying to put that under. So when you look at a power dancer, that you know, like right now, I expect all the dancers I know out there's a whole bunch of dancers out there. Should be looking spiffy by the time that we get a chance to get together again as as a whole big crowd because they'd be telling stories. You know, oh, in my first bead work, I didn't know what I was doing, so I put arrows and I put. Uh, um, I put a horse horse backwards and I put all kinds of uh, different type of things on there. And the elder came up to me and said, that one, you must be, something's wrong with your horse because your horse is going left side, you know? Um, I, I didn't know, I didn't understand that concept, but so my relative, one of my relatives, a dancer shared that one of the elder traditional dancers came up to me. I gave him some tobacco and I asked him, I said, well, can you explain what these different uh, beadwork are saying, you know, and as these, these, these our brothers and sisters out there dancing from different nations, you know, and he was explaining all these different things and he was going on and on. And he came to one beadwork and was saying that, um, he goes, now that you know these symbols or how this, this the, 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 the four corners and then the, the symbol of the sky, some of the moon and the teepee, you know, the chiefs, and you know what you know that they're speaking to, or they're riding a red horse, or there's a red buffalo, or some sort like that, or a white buffalo to talk about the buffalo people, the buffalo nation. And here we ran into somebody. Uh, so I drew a, a another picture, a beadwork I have. I wish I had it. I mean, I, had, I don't know where I put it, but it's I have it. But it has a diamond in the middle, right? And I got my horses going this way. And I got some of them going this way. So, so I okay, again, I asked this elder to look, <laughs> to look at my beadwork. And I said, I'm still gonna put it on anyway. You know, I'm still gonna put it together and rare, you know, but he was like, uh, the way he put it was like, my horses are going left and right. He said, your, you're kind of, you're, you're going left and then you can go right. Your horses are going left and right. I was like, well, how is that? He goes, well, you got one horse, the horse you got, your horse is going this way. But the other horses are, we got one horse going this way. I said, maybe that's the horse I'm talking about. I said, maybe that horse is me going the opposite direction. I don't know. But I said, but you know, it's it's very uh, it's very unique in, to yourself. And sometimes, you know, when you put, when you sew things together, you know, it, it, sometimes it, you get, you're trying to get it um, as close as you can get it to not say perfection, but there's no such thing as perfection, but um, to, to come prepared in a good way, you know? So it's telling the story of these things, you know? So when the people dance, like a grass dancer dance, they're telling, uh, in a humble way, they tell prayers. And then they share that with you with how they're gonna tell these things. To, um, they go to the places uh, within that arena, uh, to these power places to dance for you or for the elder, or they feel some kind of thing in their, their heart. And then some of the whistle carriers will go to that drum. And if you feel like they need that, that, that medicine, he will blow that whistle and that drum, that singers will sing that song. Those things are always happening. A lot of many things at the same time, interpreting the, the, the beadwork and the dances and, and in what we call the power arena. And long time ago, we were, again, we was not allowed to, uh, uh, to dance or sing, and 
years ago, like all the power grounds that you see at these different locations throughout the reservations, like Rosebud, Pine Ridge, wherever, that used to be a Sundance ground. So in a way today we have like, you got baseball, you got carnival and all, you know, all these other things going on. So there are Sundance during the day, uh, they only limit from the, 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 uh, the, the people only allow you from 12 to six, that's it, to, to Sundance, that's it. So then you got from seven to 11 or something like that, seven to almost midnight, that's it for, for power dances. Then okay, again, when we go again in the morning when the sun comes up, then you're allowed to, you know, there you can get prepared, but again at 12 to six. So that's in a sense where today you have that grand entry at one o'clock to get ready. And then you have a grand entry again at seven o'clock. So it's telling the story within that. A lot of people say, oh, I'm gonna give it for grand entry, but really it's the prayer time switching over to from Sundance to Wachipi or the power dance to bring your stories to the people now. The first afternoon, most dances, they don't, they don't dance during the day, they dance during the evening time. So they have the taco, the young ones dance during the day. Um, so um, I noticed that's one of the things I kind of caught on or noticed about how they run the powwow or the wachipi, you know? And uh, so when you go to these places, it's, it's, it's somewhat like sacred because they had ceremony there, you know, they, they uh, you know, all these, you know, but at one time, but now today we can do that now. We can, we have a different location for those things. And then we got what GP here, but those things are still there, you know, because when you have a Sundance, you put that chante in the ground and that those medicines are still there. So, but a lot of people, a lot of dancers don't know that, but, um, but now we know. I see we have Dennis in the room. Hi, Dennis. Hey, there he is. Hi, good to see you. Hi, Dennis. Welcome. We have your beautiful winter count here. I'm going to put it up. Maybe you can share a little bit. For my winter count, I put like the, the center part of it being like a COVID-19. So I put the symbol of like a virus because like it affects every aspect of my life. So that's why I put it on the center. Mm -hmm. um, from the next to it, where you see like medication and pills and stuff like that. Um, throughout the beginning of the year, I had to deal with like, you know, different medications I had to take and so that, that was part of it, like having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Then like to pay for like medications or like just living expenses, I had to work for a lot and like had, had, had a job housekeeping. So I had a lot of my, that's why I have the mop spray bottle. Oh, I and, love it. <laughs> you know, air freshener. But, but then like, uh, as soon as like I was still working, um, I was working at this resort housekeeping, um, the virus hit and they told us, to just stay home one day mm. and they said we don't know when you'll come back actually wow. and mm. so i was like i for a while there i didn't have money moving on to the next one was like you know i just felt like the world was kind of like you know you know crumbling apart i just felt like it was just kind of like you know just not you know as bright as you would think yeah that's what kind of also inspired me too just like you know all like you look at the news and it's all like you know frustrating and sad but like i kind of got inspired it's like well i want to do something different with my life <laughs> And like, yeah. even if it's tough right now. Yeah. So I got that little light bulb as like my inspiration. Mm. And so oh. I was like, well, I'm gonna do something with, uh, you know, with all the time I have now. Yeah. So like I thought, well, I should go to school. So that's what the, the books the and books are, Apple was. The Apple. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the school I went to is called the Institute of American Indian Arts or IAIA. It's located in Santa Fe. It's there where I started learning more about not only like yeah. uh, my culture, but um, like other cultures are, are across the, the nation. And even a couple from overseas, like a, like a, one of my friends was a Chinese. I put the dream catcher and like the burning sage as like a term, as like a way of like showing that I'm, you know, discovering more about my culture or at least my, it's, the oh. culture is still involved in my life. And I put the airplane there because it's the first time I've flown. Oh, <laughs> like, awesome. Oh. I had to drive all the way down to Santa Fe, but like I had to, to come back home for the winter break. I had to fly, and it was a, a short story about that. Is like a, I actually had a my flight got canceled from Santa Fe, so I had to go to Albuquerque. 
so I had to hitch a ride. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> so it was like, uh, that surprised uh, my family here, especially Trisha, because like, uh, <laughs> he actually spoke to a stranger. <laughs> 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 and the little house right there, the little heart coming out of the chimney is like, just the house, like home or symbol mm. of home. Mm. And next to it is like the head count of like both my families that I live with, mm. uh, the Burke family. Um, mm. and the Metcalf family. Oh, so, that's wonderful. I thought I'd include that there, like the, the amount of relatives I'm, you know, mostly seeing when I'm home. Beautiful. You forgot the dogs that you guys hear in the background. And cats. <laughs> yeah. I, hear the, I hear the dogs, the shunkas. Yeah, sorry. The positioning of the uh, figures, you know, with you in the middle and the little heart coming out of the chimney and also a little moon on top. Just looking down, being all sad. Oh yeah, I just see that little thing yeah. right there. I didn't, right there. I didn't notice that the first yeah. time. I Not looked so at little it. till you see it in real life. That's beautiful. And I first started the winter count. I was just like, was it three days ago? Well, this past Sunday, I started to have, I started to do the uh, my personal uh, winter count, and and of course, and I was like, I I don't think anybody wants to hear my story, so I was like, <laughs> I'll share that with you in the future, Dennis. But um, uh, you know, because I wanted to draw what took place every year. I mean, I, I'm at this age now, a long times now, you know, uh, 42 winters, as they will say, you know, with that, that continual um, existence of, of knowledge and gathering those different um, medicines and, and, and stories and stuff in traditional uh, ways, um, we, we uh, like we're doing now, is it, sharing that, you know, and this is what we got to uh, uh, continue to do so, you know, best, best way we can. Mm. Um, you know, because I, I think Marie knows how to do sign language. So, and then we had uh, one of our brothers, what is he from? Um, what was our brother from? Um, what are you thinking about? What's his name? Three Feathers. He's a, he's a quilt worker. Uh, uh, he makes star quilts. Mm. But he he's from um, Cheyenne, Northern Cheyenne, from Montana. But he lives in uh, was it New Mexico? I think he lives in New Mexico. I think mm. or Albuquerque. I can't remember what state. But he lives down there, and he has his shop down there, and he's making all these. He made a partnership with Anna Beach, and he does all these things. So, um, he he had a little performance of time talking the sign language, you know, and how the, you know these things like how we're using our hands, how what those mean. But today. We we want to reestablish that that connection with Uchu Maka, mm. you know, with each other, you know, because we, we we're showing and you know, like today was one of the things I some elders and some other brothers were sharing some knowledge today with me that you know we got to do more of this, you know, we're not communicating, you know, we're not dancing, we're not, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um. But we got text, phones, and everything. But that's another thing that we gotta, uh, you know, do our best uh, to continue that, you know. Um, and then I wait all day for people to call me, text me, email me, or something, and I don't get no nothing happens. But as soon as I jump in the shower or or something like that, do laundry or something, then all of a sudden beep beep beep, and then uh, you know. But that's okay. I'll get back to it as soon as possible. I hope doing everyone is drawing and will show us your progress on the screen, maybe. Yeah, we would like love to, to turn see on what the some camera. of you guys are. I have uh, lots of, I don't know if you can see. Let me see all the. Maybe not, oh. But I have uh, lots of uh, turtles and lots of planes. I have and a plane then, uh, in the truck. <laughs> I know that, it, uh, that not a lot of happen, stuff happened this year, but for us, it was pretty intense. Yeah. And, uh, lots of angel flight planes that went yes. out out of New Jersey and Pennsylvania and then our Turtle Island United, you know, just took over our lives this year and um, it's uh, absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, I have an eye with the wind in front of it. That's how the beginning of the year was, you know, because all of the plants just yeah. disappeared, you know, you just couldn't see in front of you at all. Mm. Uh, we had six international group uh, trips planned for 
our teenagers and everything just went down the drain and big wind came and that was <laughs> another beautiful way. experience, you know, just sitting with that um, past your comfort zone. Mm. So I'm grateful. Oh, I think we have another yeah. question here um, from Suzanne. Yeah. Can Maria explain PASA in closing? Does it take donations to help native tribes? Sure. Um, PASA Tree of Life is our nonprofit. And um, yes, we are, we are dedicated to um, the empowerment um, and sovereignty of Native nations. And we do take, definitely take donations. Our website is uh, pausatree.com. And we have a, a, it's just got up and running again this year, but it's, uh, it, it'll pretty much give you a good idea of what we've been doing and what we plan to do in the future. And um, this is just really the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, we're going to continue to help with COVID relief as long as needed, but now we are beginning to branch out um, alongside Antonaco um, in um, teaching and um, sharing uh, information, um, remembering information from long ago that's been buried for far too long. And uh, alongside our Native brothers and sisters, uh, we hope to be able to remember all of these wonderful ways of taking care of the earth and taking care of each other, um, to learn about our, our plant relatives, our animal relatives, our trees. I mean, we have our water. We have so much to learn. And the thing of it is, it's always been there. And now we are just uh, through the eyes and the lens of our Native brothers and sisters, we're beginning to find all of those miracles that have, have always been there and um, to begin to share them with each other and the world and to try to um, really to try to take care of our planet, take care of each other through these really, really trying times. You know, um, Crazy Horse had a, um, a vision and his vision that we would all come together someday, um, that something would happen in the world and we would all be brought together under the native people. Um, and experience um, just a unity and a oneness. And for us, that's what PASA is about. It's about that connectedness, the roots of the tree. And we are all that tree. We are all the roots. We are all the branches. And we all have something to bring to the table and to share. And so that, that's really what our vision of PASA is. That's just so perfect and beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Is this Thomas? Oh. Thomas, let's see it. Maybe <laughs> turn your microphone on, then oh. we'll see it on big screen. Yes. It's it's the spiral um, of oh. everything. Wow. Uh, I love it. It's everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the comments, it said, what do the pictures mean? Are they interpretation, uh, personal interpretation? Mm -hmm. Well, one could say that they are a an personal um, interpretation. Yes. But one can't say that they're in a uh, personal interpretation because once again, the interpretation existed before we thought about what our interpretation of what that interpretation meant. That's the creator. So no one is left behind mm -hmm. when we revolve around each other in the same galaxy. That's why all of nature represents this right here. Right. That is how science, the creator... call, science calls it a Fibonacci sequence. Mm. Or one mm. plus one equals three, not two. Mm. Or man and woman equal child. Love it. Mm. That's beautiful. When two come together, they form the third. That's beautiful. One plus one is not two. Well, one plus one is always one and one. Mm. When they come together, they equal a whole entire problem. Beautiful. So the problem in itself is the answer. And it's a great point about archetypes, you. you know, when it comes to interpretations, how do you look at something, you know, two generations uh, mm -hmm. uh, past and recognize and understand exactly what has been described on, mm -hmm. you know, on the hide. Um, it's almost like if um, somebody buried a time capsule, right, of things that had happened this year. And then 20 years later, dug it up, you know, what would the interpretation, would it be exactly the way it happened? It'd be perspective, right? 
Well, one couldn't say that it's a perspective. Like you said, it, um, it'd be looking, you, y'all, no ill intent, just the wording. Yeah. Uh, y'all said that you would be looking through your own eyes, but mm-hmm. be looking through our eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, before this feed had come up, you had made a comment on your personal page, and I had just put the answer to that. And it's funny that you speak of it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> if one is to look inside, then that means that they're looking without eyes. When one can, when one no longer fears what they cannot touch, then one is no longer in fear. If we fear that what we can't touch, then you're waiting on what you can't touch to grasp a hold of it, to take mm. it as yours. So if you're exhausted at gaining all of this knowledge, stop spewing out the exhaustion and take in the knowledge Mm -hmm. we're built just a car a car resembles us it has an intake combustion a heart a brain it has all of that it's 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 alive that's why we give them names we know that internally we're not looking at it and say oh it looks just like me it looks just like a car Mm -hmm. but we're internalizing that just like an mm-hmm. internal combustion engine. So just as the same as the car has an exhaust and a body and a brain, it still has to intake something to give out. You made a, you shared a post that says that to be blessed is to give and to take is to be damned. Well, then one has to stop giving. And like I put on your post, if you're give, then if you're blessed to give, then you're only looking at the smile that you're putting on your face. If you respect that one that is a taker, then you are respecting the, the smile that you put on their face. We revolve around each other. Many a teachers know this knowledge in this sense. A teacher teaches because she loves everybody or he loves everybody. We know as teachers that there's a comprehension or a bell curve. Hmm. Just like they talk with the COVID, there's a bell curve. In that bell curve, there's going to be, one would say, a far end of the spectrum and then the other. But once again, they got to coincide because that's what the bell curve is. It connects the two together. And the top of the bell curve is the exact point. Well, in the concept of this language, the one that doesn't have the answer but has the knowledge won't raise their hand because they don't want to get picked on by the ones that do know the knowledge. And on the other end of the spectrum, there's the ones that have the answer, but they don't have the knowledge. So they don't raise their hand because they don't want to get picked on by the ones that do know. And teachers deal with this on a daily basis. You're a nerd. Quit it. Leave him alone. You made a D last week. So now the teacher had put it out in the open. Those two kids can't fight about each other no more. They know something that you don't know and you know something they don't know. So the teacher is the one that's bridging the gap or is the exact on the bell curve. But then again, the teacher is not the exact because she wouldn't be needed or he wouldn't be needed if there wasn't the two ends of the bell curve. So once again, it's the spiral or natural life or natural law that we all revolve around each other. And that's what the winter count represents too. And that's where the bell curve comes in. Underneath the bell curve, there's nothing. Hmm. But there is something. Otherwise, that bell curve wouldn't have an (laughs) arc to push it up out of the way. So there's something right there where it looks like there's nothing. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been that bubble there. So that bubble that's making that exact to be where it is, the ones that don't know anything, the answer or the question. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing Thank you, this. Thomas. Does anyone else have a winter con to show us? I try to I try to draw like Dennis, but of you course did. I, no, it's not like I, Dennis. It's not like Dennis, but yeah. <laughs> but 
it, I don't know how far you can see that there. Oh, look but, at that. Can you tell us a little bit? Why don't you tell? Oh gosh, yes. Explain. So this is when Paza, we officially officially made Paza here. And then COVID happened. We dreamed about helping the people, how we're gonna do it. And then COVID happened. So we have the people here reaching out to each other. We start uh, leaning on each other with the people. We start learning, uh, see what's going on. And of course, I got this. It's a, uh, let me see, turn it around this way. Jeez, mm -hmm. I've already made it around the circle. <laughs> uh, so this little mess up here was COVID. Uh, we're just like all oh, confused. We don't know what we're gonna do with money or how, how we're gonna do a job, get a job. So I just kind of interpret this this thing all crazy, like just different things. Then I went to computer. I guess I start learning technology. I start learning technology how to to do emails and communicate like this. Then there was a new moon. Then I start doing. Uh, I start going to sweat lodges. And then we decided to. Uh, we take it on this side now. Then we decided to do the um, uh, a run. Was that back in May, June? Mm -hmm. I think it was May, June. We had a to help the Southwest brothers and sisters. We had a truckload to deliver water barrels and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you start thinking about the turtle, Turtle Island. Then that kind of took us up to where we're at now. Then we decided to, again, to, we take a trip back home from my place, South Dakota, Midwest. So this time we took a little van. I can't draw a van that good, but a van and a truck. Then we made it to South Dakota. And then on the South Dakota, we went to Devil's Devil's Tower, Bear Butte to bless, but come alive in the ceremony with the Chinupa, which we did there. And um, and then from there, we had uh, went to go see my mom. So we, she was very happy. I'm not going to say what happened out there, but it was a good time. <laughs> um, and then it's just take knowledge and take more, uh, uh, you know, internet medicines, and then and and go forth with the people. And then um, bringing that into that circle of today. So that's all my this whole for a year now. And then now we have the uh, the 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 what was it the Star David or the, oh yeah or they call it the Star David, the but Christmas I mean star. the Christmas star that happened a long time ago. But now this is the time we got to witness that this year. And then so and these different moons that this year we had a triple double all the way through each month. So there's like two. This is the last couple of days of that four two moons. That's happening this this week. Actually, what uh, Friday? Is it Friday? Mm -hmm. Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Into the new years. This is a new changeover uh, of the next um, forward. Uh, so that's my interpretation of, of the winter count. Very cool. Thank you so much. What a year! Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. Yeah, so this is my full time job right now. What I do, this is, I consider it a job. I'm still going after other work and stuff, but um, hopefully uh, some more things will work out in the future that we can accommodate to do more. Friends, so we have another webinar coming uh, on J January 10th. Um, feel free to join us. Another great discussion, uh, beautiful topics on traditional medicine for the body, mind, and spirit. Um, with our uh, Navajo friends. Um, and um, I just posted a link in the comments about mm -hmm. the project and the series, and we will be at it for a few months. So feel free to pop in, check the schedule, join us. We are happy to see your faces, hear your insights. It's been wonderful having these discussions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.